Good morning as we join together to celebrate one of the greatest feasts of our church here, Palm Sunday. I know it's not quite as exciting without a palm in hand and being in church and watching the kids process, but nevertheless, it is a joyous time to raise up our hosannas to our Lord who has come triumphantly as our King to save us from sin, from death, and the power of the devil. And so we begin with our opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, Hymn 442. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive. 
forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We continue by speaking our intro it responsively, half verse by half verse. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Be not far from me, for the trouble is near. And there is none to help. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem, with palms in their hands, gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson appointed for today comes from the book of Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Philippians, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowds spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And we join in confessing with our loud hosannas our faith in our Christ through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue our service with our sermon hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, hymn 441.
peace, mercy be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I know it's not the ideal way to celebrate Palm Sunday without being able to come together and have our Sunday school kids wave the palm branches, or certainly being able to sing uh, together with a big loud voice these wonderful praise songs. But then, you know, I do wonder, there might actually be something edifying about all of this in our present situation. Because it does leave us with a fair bit to mourn on the very same day that, theoretically, we're aiming to sing some of our loudest praises to Jesus. After all, this is the beginning of Holy Week. And the change in tone from today to the end of the week is pretty profound. We start the week singing praises to Christ. But in just a few days, we'll start reading about Jesus being tortured and killed. That's a big 180 turn in attitude. But that was just how fast it went for Jesus, who arrived in Jerusalem to throngs of people who could not even contain themselves because they were so excited to see Jesus convinced that he was God's promised king, confident that he was going to guide and guard them from all of these powers that were keeping them down and destroying them. But just a few days later, their shouts of Hosanna turned to crucify. It seems absolutely insane, and it really is crazy. But it is a kind of crazy that I think we all know pretty well, because we're all kind of part of that crazy. Honestly, how many times has it happened where you're just kind of struck with how great and powerful and full of grace God is? How many Sundays have you come to church and just been overwhelmed with the fact that Christ is coming among you? has listened to your prayers, bent down to guard and protect your life, even in the middle of some pretty dark times. How many times has it happened that we have been absolutely convinced that our king has brought us so much hope and peace that we would be willing to lay down our lives for him, that we would shout Hosanna from our knees and offer up everything we have and are to the praise of his glory. And yet, how often has it been that not five days later, like the Jews in the Bible, but only five minutes later, we find ourselves, find our hearts, our hands, doing something that is aimed directly against everything he has come to bring. How often has it happened that five minutes after church, the grumbling, the gossiping, the arrogance, the apathy, the anger begins in earnest. And we're back spending every last bit of our life on pretty much every little desire that happens to come to us, completely ignoring the king and all of his words. How fast do our hosannas become all sorts of little hopes and ideas and goals that want nothing to do with the kind of life a king like him is trying to bring? We turn so fast from praise to sin that it could give God whiplash. And make no mistake, the moment we turn to sin, we are attempting to buck him off the throne as our king. We're starting to call him someone that we don't want ruling over us. Telling him, bore less, get out of my life right now. Leave me alone because I have things I want to do. I've got goals I want to chase. I want my kingdom and I want my life, not yours. Now, we won't say it that crudely, typically, but our actions speak louder than our words. And every one of our sins cries out from the least of our sins to the greatest. Crucify him. In fact, why don't you just look down? Take a good long look at your hands as you're sitting there thinking about how you might well have been holding palm branches in them this morning if you were here at church. 
Go ahead. And if you're watching this at home, as you look at them, think about how you almost certainly have had them folded in prayer this morning. Take a good long look at them. Because those hands that may very well be folded and raised to God's praise will almost certainly very soon be stained once again with the blood of the very same person you are trying to use those hands to praise right now. You will almost certainly soak those same hands with his blood today, as you have countless times before, without a moment of compunction, without hardly a moment of hesitation. It's easy to look at the crowd that once cheered him and turn, turned around to so soon relish his death as completely beyond the pale of evil. Pilate wanted to be left out of it. He didn't want the blood of this man on his hands. But this crowd, they were so set against Jesus that they were more than happy to put down their palms and actually say out loud, let his blood be on us. Let it be on our children. It's easy to look down on them, but to our very great shame, we have all very willingly turned from praising Christ one minute to going against him in some way or another the very next and starting to pursue things and keeping on with things that literally make him shudder. And so we have all sullied our hands with his blood almost immediately after lifting our hands to pray to him to save us. The irony of it is terrifying. But the crowds didn't know the true irony of their words. They intended quite gladly when they said, let his blood be on us and on our children to bear the full weight of killing Christ. They wanted the responsibility because they intended this to be the great escape from the so-called king who they decided they didn't want to rule them after all. But Christ is not a king you can simply dismiss, not even by killing him. And the very blood that this crowd spilled, hoping to end him, turned out to be Christ's way of ruling his people and being their king. The very thing that they spill to set themselves free from him turned out to be the very thing he would use to secure them as his own. The very thing that he would use to guard them, to Fill them with hope and give them peace to protect them, to save them from all these things that might destroy them. To save them even, as Peter's sermon in the second chapter of Acts makes clear, even from their own treasonous act of murder. For as Christ was being put up on the cross, his life blood flowed out. But it flowed out as a pure and a true sacrifice for their sins and for our sins. Jesus therefore turned that act of putting him to death as his own offering of his own life to God in order to plead with God for mercy so that the very same people who killed him, so that all people who oppose God, including you and me, might not be destroyed and might not be left to rot for our evil as we certainly deserve. His blood be on us and on our children. That's what they said. And when Christ went up on the cross, he turned around and basically said to them, Yes, may my blood be truly upon you and your children. May you come to me and wash your hands and your hearts and even your children's hands and hearts in my blood. Because my blood is going to wash away your guilt. It will wash away your pretend kingdom and all of your reign, which always brings you to death. So may you come to my blood and may it be upon you so that you may instead be made into my child. Maybe part of my sacrifice might become part of my kingdom. And he does say that same thing to you, too, you know. And it doesn't matter how much of his blood you have on your hands. It does not matter how many 
and how terrible your sins have been. No matter how quickly or how often you put your palms down and rose against him and called for his death, he still has come. And rest assured, he will come again to you to say, take and drink. Here is my blood of a new covenant, which I give for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Let my blood be upon you and wash away your guilt and your evil and be welcome to my table and my kingdom. So take one last look at those blood soaked hands of yours. My fellow traitors, my fellow sinners, my fellow Christ killers. And learn very well whose blood stains them. Know well whom you have set yourself against over and over again. But know even better still what he aims to do with that blood. And now fold those hands with me and pray. O oh Lord Jesus, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, may your blood be upon us. May it be upon our children, that we may be forgiven of our many and terrible sins, that your blood may wash us from every stain and bring us to live forever under you, our Savior and our King. May this blood so renew our hearts that we might not seek to rise against you or follow our own sinful ways. Nevertheless, if any one of us do sin, help us to remember that your blood is upon us, that it is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but the sin of the whole world. Therefore, Lord, you have saved us. Come again when we falter to save us again. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. We continue our service with our offertory hymn, No Tramp of Soldiers Marching Feet, hymn 444.
Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to be our King, for his glorious triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem, for his journey to the cross, for his atoning death and his resurrection. Help us to prepare the way for his coming to our hearts with palm branches in hands and cries of hosannas on our lips that we may greet the day of his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, grant that your church throughout all the world may urge the people to gather before you, that they may all be prepared for your coming, that they might not fear your judgments, but rejoice in the salvation you accomplish. Lord, in your mercy, Father, we ask that you would be and abide with all those authorities you have raised up to oversee and govern our daily life. We ask that you would give them continued wisdom in the midst of this epidemic, that whatever decisions they make may be aimed toward the welfare of your people, that we may enjoy the daily bread you provide us so freely in peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask especially for all those who are suffering any degradation of body or of soul. Hear the prayers of their hearts and hear our prayers on their behalf. In all things, O Lord, grant them the assurance that you will guide them through the trials of this life unto the glories of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we know that there are many things for which we should ask. We have many things we would ask in our hearts. We know that you do hear them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy Bless we the Lord. Thanks be The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, hymn 443.
that we welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who lays down his life for his people to raise us into life with him. We wish for God's presence on this holy week. We pray that we may be able to gather again to worship together on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and especially on the blessed Easter morn. But we will alert you to any changes in the schedule as they become known to us. Go in God's peace. Serve the Lord.